It's been a hot minute, gentles and ladymen. Welcome back to my channel for something completely different from my usual content. If you're new here and just stumbling across this because you're a DIYer, I usually do sewing videos. Me and my fiancé have been looking for a house for the last little while, and as you can tell by this video, we have found one. And there was a lot of stuff that legally hadn't gone through yet. So I went through and did a lot of work on the house because I figured the best time to do this work would be before we even moved in. They say that the kitchen is the heart of the home. I cannot attest to this because I don't particularly enjoy cooking on a regular basis because I hate doing the dishes. It feels like a hamster wheel. I'm just dirtying my dishes in order to clean them again in order to dirty them again. But my future wife, on the other hand, is quite fond of cooking, so it is her birthday coming up, so I figured she's been really busy at work. I would finish up all of our kitchen stuff before we moved in as sort of an early birthday present for her. The way that I did this, sort of my order of operations, if you know anything about like actual professional house building, is probably not going to make a ton of sense. And that's mostly because we weren't 100% sure how long it would be before we could move into the house. So we started by things that would be either most irritating to do once we moved in or things that we didn't want to put up with once we had actually moved into the house. The addition that is now the kitchen was added into the house sometime in the 70s, and as far as I am aware, there has been no other work done on that kitchen since the 70s when the kitchen was installed, which means that it needed a lot of cosmetic updating. And our first priority was definitely replacing the floors, as the floors in the house were just plywood painted over. Yeah, just painted over plywood in the food room. That seemed a little risky for us, so we put down some life-proof luxury vinyl plank, and that is something we're very happy with. After we put the new floors in, we finally actually got word that the lawyer was drawing up documents for us after about five months of just complete silence. So that really kicked me into gear and I had several light weeks of, on terms of my actual real job. So I decided it was time, if there was ever going to be a convenient time to do the counters and the cabinets, it was going to be this time. After several nights of staying up late in order to see everything that I could possibly do to the countertops, it, I realized that I could paint and make the countertops look like Corian, like solid surface countertops, without having to just replace the countertops with Corian, which was quite frankly not in the budget. I saw contradictory reports of whether you're actually supposed to prime when you paint using countertop coating on countertops. However, I figured it wouldn't hurt and I had primer left over from when I was doing the walls. You can't tell because I lost the footage somewhere, but I went through all of the walls were coated in a wallpaper, but my grandparents did not prime before they put up that wallpaper so it had fused permanently into the walls and I had to peel the like plastic top layer up and then seal the walls and then spackle everything and then finally actually paint and it was not a good time. So I didn't know whether this actually helped but I figured it couldn't hurt. After going through and sanding and priming everything, I went through with three layers of countertop coating, which is a product by Rust-Oleum, specifically like four countertops. And I went in with pewter gray. However, I don't 100% love this as a base. 
since it was so similar to the color that we picked for the walls. But considering what else I was going to do to it, it was fine. And Rust-Oleum countertop coating can only be tinted to like 12 colors, so my, my options were extremely limited. Honestly, watching the old linoleum, terrible fake wood that doesn't match anything else in the kitchen and I don't know why they picked it, was one of the most satisfying things about this whole process. Everything else is like multiple layers of paint on stuff, but this? Just watching, watching the total instant transformation, 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Felt very accomplished at the end of the day. So while we watch the very satisfying footage of the ugly wood laminate being taken over by the gray paint, I figured I would go over some reasons why I've done it this way rather than in a way that some people might associate with having a more satisfying ending. And most of it relates to a combination of personal taste and budget. I know you guys as people on the internet have probably seen people just pull out their whole old kitchen and replace it with an entirely new kitchen set with new cabinets and everything. But number one, that was not in the budget. Uh, not everyone has $15,000 to just drop on a new IKEA kitchen. And number two, that is something that I didn't like the idea of doing because I don't like the idea of ripping things that still function out of old houses simply because they are old rather than updating them. I grew up watching my father make furniture and while the things he made are a lot nicer than quite frankly this kitchen was never like a fantastic, well-made, well-manufactured, excellent, beautiful kitchen even when it was installed in the 70s. My grandparents never had much money to their name. It doesn't, it wouldn't be worth pulling all of this out to put in something that will not last, will not be nice over the long term, but is cheap and modern. So instead of doing that, we are saving our money to go towards a much better kitchen. Eventually we want to, when we can afford it, actually afford it, log some of the trees. This is on four and a half ish acres and there's another four and a half ish acres next door that my father is going to continue owning that we can get that from, use locally sourced materials and get a really, really nice kitchen that is going to last, that isn't going to fall apart like an Ikea kitchen in 10 years, isn't going to look dated and look like every other Ikea kitchen, but is actually going to be full of good craftsmanship and look gorgeous 30, 40 years down the line and isn't going to off-gas from its laminate nastiness like I'm sure our current kitchen is doing. You don't have to be worried about environmental damage here, by the way. The land is practically untouched, that nine and some acres, and a lot of it is completely old growth forest, and we only intend to take what we actually need for the kitchen and for, you know, six fires in our fireplace every year. We intend to be very sustainable about it, and we intend to put up solar panels. By the way, what you just saw me do was use the stone textured spray paint in stone gray, I believe, to go through and spray down the whole surface lightly in order to create sort of a DIY Corian on top of that gray. And it makes it look much less like the wall when everything was said and done. And then I'm putting multiple layers of water-based polyurethane down on top of that spray paint in order to make it smooth. If you're doing this, by the way, I would recommend skipping the regular water-based polyurethane and using the three times thicker 
polyurethane, which feels more like the polyurethane that I remember my dad using as a kid. So this stuff was extremely thin, and I wasn't 100% happy with how it was coming out, but I did find that three times thicker eventually. A lot of the tutorials that I found on using stone paint and countertop coating in order to paint your countertop used epoxy over this, but I quite frankly was not going to remove my stove and my sink in order to pour epoxy on top of my work, so three times thicker water-based polyurethane will have to do. And thus far, we've done several projects on that countertop, and it's been just fine. It doesn't have the exact same, like, DIY Corian effect, like it doesn't look perfectly like solid surface, but it looks close enough, and it, at the very least, looks like less shitty laminate. I'm not really sure how to fill in the rest of this footage of me doing it, so I am going to just kind of keep talking here, and if it gets enough requests, I can upload a version of this that is just like ASMR DIY footage, if you guys want to just watch me do this with the ambient noise. That's a thing I can do. After sanding down those coats of polyurethane with 220 in between each coat and putting like six of them on, I finally went through and started sanding the cabinet faces because I could not stand to look at them any longer. I didn't bother to do the insides of the cabinets because the, the cost-benefit analysis was just not there for doing the insides that, quite frankly, I can barely see. Like I said earlier, these, these cabinets are from the 70s, and they have this awful lip instead of having proper poles. So I went through and just sanded that down until it basically didn't exist anymore so that I could have cabinets that sucked a little bit less. And it came out looking actually pretty okay. For anyone who's never done a cabinet remodel, it takes a lot of money to get new cabinet doors, especially when they're from the 70s and every cabinet is a different size and none of them are just regular sizes that you can find in a store. If we were to replace these cabinet faces, we would have had to get them all custom made. And cabinet faces that are custom made are at least $60 per cabinet. Most of the drawers in the kitchen still work just fine. There are a couple that were pretty sketchy, but most of those are on, like, the far side of the kitchen that doesn't get used as much. The only one that we had to actually replace the body of was one directly next to the cooktop that had had mice in it at some point. And I, was, I bleached it six times and was like, no. No, we're not using this. Absolutely not. You'll notice me sanding down, like, the smooth surfaces of all of those cabinets. Number one, I wanted to paint them. Number two, I pretty much had to paint them because they were not white. They were, like, off-white. I don't know if they were originally white, but they were definitely not white anymore, so... Those all got sanded down and primed and painted, and I had to sand them down because the primer that I wanted to use was Kills 2, and Kills 2 only works on glossy surfaces if they've been appropriately prepared, as they call it. And yes, when you're, when you're painting laminate cabinets, you absolutely need to use a primer. It doesn't matter if you're using a paint that claims to be a paint and primer, you need to use a primer. So I used Kills 2 and then went through with bare scuff defense. I used a light gray for the top and a darker gray for the bottom cabinets. And I know the darker gray was antique tin, the one that I used on the bottom. Do not remember what color I used on the top. 
might look that up later and put it on the screen somewhere. But I think I did edit it somewhat with some paint that I had lying around because it was a little bit lighter than I would have preferred. If it were just me, I probably would have just gone for a white on white kitchen, but it was also my fiance and she did not want, she thought white on white was a little bit risky in the food room. After everything was primed, I put the cabinet faces back on because like I said, absolutely everything was a different size and I couldn't be sure what cabinets was supposed to go where when they were off the thing and I wasn't going to make like a giant cross-reference chart of every cabinet and where the cabinets needed to be so I just put the cabinet faces back on. Also while priming I got primer all over my freshly painted living room floor because that was the only place that had anywhere near enough space for me to do all of the painting, so I would recommend just putting them back on. Obviously none of that actually applies when you're just doing one tone of cabinets. You can just paint them all the same color and worry about it later, but for two-tone cabinets you absolutely do need to put your cabinets back first. You may also notice that my cabinets are slightly askew and that's because I didn't realize that you could adjust the angle so I just put everything back the way that they had been and they turned out uneven and I was like all right I guess this is we're just gonna live like this now but my dad got out the world's tiniest screwdriver that wasn't made for glasses and luckily went through and fixed a lot of that for me. It was also when I got to the cabinets that I decided that this was going to be my fiance's early birthday gift and that she was not allowed to help anymore and I would do the rest of this and I got a little, a little jazzy when it came to the rest of the process. I knew we needed pulls but then I went through and did several other tasks that didn't necessarily need to be done right then. But hey, while well, I was doing stuff. Number one of these tasks was something that I find to be incredibly bougie, but only cost like $32 in maybe two hours. And that is under cabinet lighting. Now, if you're, if you're someone who lives in a house that makes sense, you probably have somewhere in your cabinets where there is an outlet that your microwave is plugged into. If you have, you know, a microwave that is above your oven. However, we had no such luxury. And I was not sure if I would be able to go through and actually set up under cabinet lighting, whether I would have to go through somewhere weird, because there is no outlets in my upper cabinets. However, then I realized that there was an outlet in the over the sink light, so I ran this extra power strip here so that I could put lights going in both directions and just don't look at the spot above the sink just don't look at it it's ugly however it did mean that I could install under cabinet lights going both ways Could we have lived without this bonus lighting underneath the cabinets? Absolutely. We did not need task lighting. However, does it feel like a little luxury project that I DIY'd and that absolutely turned it from a mediocre kitchen into a kitchen that no longer makes me feel like I'm living in a cheap, shitty apartment? Yes. Yes. It absolutely does. 
It's also just nice to have because my low light vision is not fantastic. So it makes me feel a lot more confident when I'm in the kitchen and I can actually see stuff. If you've never used this sort of light fixture, never had a place that used them, generally there is an outlet above like the stove or the microwave, if you have a microwave over your stove, where you can plug stuff in and then you run the light. These lights have extra small connectors so you can just drill little half inch holes throughout your cabinets. Generally you try and do it in the corner so that they're really small and discreet and they don't get in the way of anything and then you run those in between your cabinets so that you can have this extra light. It's great for tasks. It makes it look quite expensive, but they're super easy and cheap to install. They're, I think it was 35 or $32 for a pack of three lights. I had to use two of them, obviously. I just had to use two because I wanted them to run in two different directions, but if you're only doing one set of cabinets that all go in one spot, highly recommend. Super easy DIY project. It only took me, someone with almost no experience, about two hours, and most of that was just me struggling to actually get the little braces that hold the wires up onto the thing, because I am super bad at hammering stuff, as it turns out. While we're on the topic of electric stuff, I also had my dad and grandfather help me replace all of the outlets that were in this room with the proper types of outlets. Uh, they were all old almond that had discolored over time, and I wanted them all to be white to match the modern kitchen, but also the ones next to the sink are supposed to be GCFI, I believe it is, which is the type of outlet that if you chuck something into the water, it'll automatically stop power to the outlet so that you don't get electrocuted. And the one that wasn't meant to be GCFI just got replaced with a tamper-proof outlet. So now if we have a little kid over and they stick their fingers in the outlet or a fork or something, they won't get electrocuted. After all those were installed, I could finally start installing my poles because they had finally arrived. I made a little guide for myself with how far apart the holes needed to be, although they were ever so slightly off. And I, it was ever so slightly a nightmare. It also was just kind of a pain because... These were metric poles, so I had to go to the specialty fasteners section of the Home Depot to find the correct machine screws, and even then they didn't have them in the quantity that I needed or the correct size, because you need a specific size so that it doesn't have extra space, and I ended up using nuts anyway in order to take up the extra space so that my poles would not halfway pull out of the cabinets, it, like where the Lazy Susan is, and there's a couple of cabinets that have like a bonus plank in between to fill in a gap that's pretending to be a cabinet face. Like I said, this kitchen is really weird. Here I shall also give you the ballad of some things that I didn't actually record because I did them with the help of my dad and grandfather and didn't want to be like, hey, do you want to be disembodied hands for my YouTube video? So first I must tell you the ballad of the flare nuts. If you don't know what it's like in the country, uh, we use a lot of gas appliances because they're more reliable than the power grid a lot of the time. So our dryer and our water heater are both natural gas. And so we went to put the dryer back in because we took the dryer and the washing machine out so that we could put the floors down and so that I could paint behind them. 
So my dad wanted to install like bonus, a bonus cutoff so that I wouldn't have to sacrifice my hot water if the dryer went out and I had to cut gas power to it. So we needed some like extra parts. And we chose to do this on a Saturday because we were pretty sure that the little tiny local hardware store would be open because it was a Saturday, not a Sunday. However, they were not open. The store was shut, the lights were off, like it definitely was not open. So I go down to another hardware store that is basically down the street. They close at two o'clock on Saturdays and I get there at 2.10. I go further down the road to a value and uh, yeah, they, they're they open and I need three eighths inch flare nuts. They have half inch and they have quarter inch flare nuts. They do not have the parts that I need. This is my third store. Finally go to the Home Depot and I almost think they do not have my flare nuts, that they are sold out. But it turns out somebody put a bunch of the wrong thing in front of my flare nuts. And also that was above my head. It was above my reach and I had to have a Home Depot employee get those for me. So after that, it was time to put curtains up because I wanted things to look polished. And I put up some curtain rods and had had her pick out some curtains. She did a good job for absolutely having no idea what the space looked like because she hadn't seen it since I painted the countertops. I mean, the walls were already done, but she had not seen any of the cabinets or the cabinet hardware. And then I also installed some tie-back hooks, although I wouldn't recommend using these particular command hooks. They don't have enough of, like, a curve to actually hold the curtain tie-backs on there. So I ended up having to pull these off and reinstall a different hook system. I ended up just using, like, those open hooks that you can buy for, you know, a four pack for $1.69 and that were just plain and somehow I managed to do some sort of strange math and originally I made four tie backs and then did not bring all four tie backs because I was like wait why did I make four tie backs there's only two sets of curtains but there were four curtains in total I don't know why I did that I also purchased like a matching quatrefoil gray and white hamper to go underneath our, basically it's just a hole in the wall posing as a laundry chute, but we needed something to go under that. So I also purchased that and set that up and then it was ready, ready for future wife. I know I'm a nerd. You are a massive nerd. Dude, this looks cool! <laughs> yeah, uh, the switch next to the sink. Turn it on. You'll have a nasty fan. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't gonna just buy a light fixture oh, without gosh. your... You did a good job, dude. Thank you. That kind of looks good. Not bad for picking 
eating a lot of shit that I couldn't see. <laughs> Did we have leftover poles? Yeah. Always good I didn't keep those. <laughs> Which was the one your dad did? Uh, this one right here. This one? Yeah. The only new drawer in the entire kitchen. Yep. That's good. <laughs> Oh, you got the partitions. Yeah. Yeah, I also painted the uh, little duct thing so that they're not so obvious that it's in the middle of the room. Oh, this thing? No, down at beneath your feet. Oh, this thing? Yeah. Oh. No, no shots of my feet, see? We're not putting that on the internet. <laughs> That's Patreon only exclusive content That's right there. Only fans. <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> Good. Feel like the hamper? The hamper, yeah, it looks good. It matches our Waterfall. other decor. Yeah, so it matches with the pattern. Uh -huh. It does smell like paint, but hey, eh, it's gonna be like that for a bit. Yeah, it's better smelling like paint than like mouse shit, which is what it smelled like at first, so. Do enjoy. Mm -hmm. That looks good. I'm kind of surprised you didn't paint this thing. It's Not so I'm you too, but it's so glossy that I, it would have oh, been. You would have had to sand it first. Yeah, and I already sanded all of the cabinets for like days, so. Are they under? Yeah. yeah those, ones, all of them. those are the under cabinet lights. Because there's that outlet in the. in the. above the sink light. No kidding. Yeah. Nice. Don't look too closely at under the underside of that cabinet there. I had to get a hole in it. Okay. You did a good job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I also put new light bulb in here so we can like keep it on low mm -hmm. all the time and have. Oh, um, Dad said it should be rather easy to get into ignition for the stove so we don't have to um, strike matches. Oh, cool. Because Lord knows I'm trying to find a fire. I didn't know you could like get igniters for those, at least not without spending a fortune. Yeah, it's I did not paint it. So it should, in theory. Because like, I asked him that. Elderly like, stovetop. The oven is new, the cooktop is not. You want me so much bread in this thing? <laughs> and cookies and shit? Yeah. Well, it's not a double oven, it's an oven and broiler. Yeah, but uh, it's not like we're going to be making any massive full-size turkeys. Yeah, we're not going to be feasting people over here. There's the only disappointment, not enough room. The only disappointment in the oven is when you make massive batches of cookies. Literally, that's it. <laughs> and that happens twice a year, if that. Oh, that's sawdust. Yeah. That's sawdust from when I was sanding all the everything. At some point, I need to remember to break out my 3D printer and get one of those little can jam things that you can just open, twist the jars. Oh. Yeah. Because you can 3D print that shit and then just twist open jars and because we, we, there's obviously no men in this house. There's no one with good grip strength. Yeah, <laughs> I replaced one of the outlets and then like attempted to replace another when my dad showed up and he was like, I'm doing this. 
these are not in here nice and tight. So he and Rick did that. I can't get over what a good job you did. <laughs> it's a full kitchen! It's a full, full kitchen! With a pantry! In a fridge! And the freezer is in the spare room! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not enough space for us to have both. Oh yeah, no, I get that. In this tiny room. Oh yeah, no, I get that, that's fine. Well, we could if we didn't have the laundry chute, but maybe. We, we would have to take out the freezer in order to get the washer out. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying, though, is, I was about to say, though, is that if we, even if we did put it in there, we'd have to go around, we'd have to be like this with the washer, trying to get stuff in there around the freezer. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be ideal. And we still have that thing which I love dearly. Fucking ugly feeling fan. No, no, fucking ugly feeling fan. But oh, there it goes. Okay, fine. What? Your beanie? It just fell. Fine hat. That's gonna be nice. Hanging like herbs and stuff on top of. Yeah. Not that we can really dry stuff out considering the humidity hovers around 50-60%. Well, if you already have like dried out stuff, okay. then they can just hang there. We can put a cool ceiling light up there eventually. Mm -hmm. That's not a priority. Yeah. Considering that you have to look all the way up there in order to see the ceiling fan, it's not a big... Not a big deal. We could probably put like a, one of those big black ones they sell at Walmart up there. We're getting desperate. Mm -hmm. Ain't gonna say for now. You need to do something different than the nasty yarn though. Yeah, I was gonna get like new cords to hang it Ball from. Chains. Yeah, but I couldn't find one that was like, I wouldn't have to like daisy chain together in order to get one long enough. That's the fan. Now I'm just looking energy conservation and calm pulses. What kind of nerdy shit do you want to get on there? Why not? Why would we put nerd shit at the end of the ceiling fan? Because we're both goddamn pulse. nerds! I wish we had like a light switch that that went to. I'm not really sure how to end this video, so here is the before, and shortly there will be glamour shots of the finished kitchen. So I hope you enjoyed it. You will be receiving an empty house tour and a lot of sewing room makeover content in the future here, but I need to get this video finished so that I have space on my SD card in order to record more of that. Because I am running out of space, and all of my on SD cards have betrayed me by simply corrupting all of the data of a lot of my projects that I've been working on. I'm, I'm suffering, you guys. I promise content's coming soon. So like this video, if you liked this video, subscribe if you would like to see extremely modern house renovations and or historical costuming content, which is what I normally post. You can join my Discord if you would like to be slightly less in the dark about all of the everything happening, but I w didn't want to just not tell everyone and have, like, suddenly we're in a completely new location and I've been gone for months.